Hey, welcome to session 11, Bible Studies for Life and winter of 2020. And today we're looking at the question that is asked through the material, does God really understand my pain and my suffering? Well, I think we all know the answer to this is, of course, yes, he does. But looking at a passage to really understand what that means and see what's going on uh, in in pain and suffering from God's perspective and how he understands, identifies with us even more so than we can even imagine. We may think that ours is terrible, but we can't we can't come anywhere close to relating what God understands about pain and suffering. So today we look at Isaiah chapter 53, one of the great chapters in the Bible. It feels like I say that a lot as you look at these passages, but it is one of the great chapters in the Bible. Isaiah 53, the story of the suffering servant, a tremendous passage. And so today we're going to look at this uh, verse. Uh, we'll start today looking at verse 3. It says, He was despised and rejected by men a man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised and we didn't value him. Well, this is the, the picture of who Jesus is, this prophecy about who Jesus will be and the experience. And as you read it, it's amazing because it looks like it could have been written afterwards. It, it so accurately and so in depth describes who Christ is and the suffering that he went through. But it is written before, hundreds of years before Christ comes. This passage is written, prophesied by Isaiah under the inspiration of the Lord. And he uses these words, ugly, horrific violent words about who Jesus was and, and how he suffered for us. Look at the words just here, despised, rejected, a man of suffering. He knew what sickness was. People turned away from him. Again, despised. We didn't value him. Uh, we see in verse four, he bore our sickness. He carried our pain. Uh, we regarded him as stricken. We thought he was struck down by God. We thought he had been afflicted because of what he had done. These words that we used of him, pierced and crushed and oppressed and slaughtered and judgment and cut off. All of these words are horrible, painful words. But this is the cross. This is the description of who Jesus is and what Jesus went through. When we think about the question, does God understand our suffering? Man, Maybe the better question is, is there any way that we could ever understand God's suffering? That we could ever understand Christ's suffering? Because the cross is terrible. Have you ever seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ? You know, an amazing movie, but I'll tell you, it's, it's a movie that's hard to watch the first time. And it is almost impossible to watch again. I've got the DVD. I've never watched it. It, it never viewed because it's just so hard to watch it again. And, and it's just a movie about the pain that Christ went through. The, the reality of the cross is so ugly and so horrific. We often don't even want to talk about it because it is so terrible. I mean, we kind of want to talk about it in some kind of clean terms, but not in the real terms of what it is. God understands our suffering. This next section it describes this. He was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him. We are healed by his wounds. And then that verse six, we all went astray like sheep. Um, we turned to our own way and the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all. Man, the cross is a terrible place. I want you to notice something about this though. Just that stands out to me as I look at this passage. There are two things. One is our, our rebellion, our iniquities, our peace. We are healed. We went astray. We turned to our own way. And the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all. You see all those plural pronouns? You know, even as Isaiah writes this, he, he knows he's a part of that group. That that's It's all of us. All of us are sinners. We are all in that place. We're all in need. We're all common con we have a share of common condition and our sin had great consequence because christ had to die for us to be free from it our, christ had to uh, suffer punishment um, this rebellion that we have done led to his death 
And my sin, this is my sin, but we all have this. You know, we all have this sin. But I want you to notice another thing that really stood out to me, and that is the verbs. You notice the verbs here? He was pierced, and, and this goes throughout the passage, right? The punishment for our peace was on him. Um, the Lord has punished him. You see those, those past tense? You look through this entire chapter, and every time Isaiah is using a past tense, as if this event has already happened. Isn't that interesting? That, that Isaiah is prophesying about the future, about the coming Messiah, the, the suffering servant, and yet he, he says this, he writes this in past tense because Christ has been slain since before the foundation of the earth, right? He, this event that they were at that time, Isaiah would look forward to, we now look back on, God has always known. He's always known. He has, and... and and just this little piece, okay? When we go through hard times, when we go through difficulty, it is in a moment, and it may be for a long moment, okay? It may be for hours or days or weeks or months or even years. God has suffered the pain of Christ on the cross since before eternity began, right? Since before time began, this settled event and God, who is beyond time, has known of this pain and has experienced this pain that entire time. He knows about our pain. He knows about our suffering. He knows how horrible it is. He knows how terrible, how terrible it is to hurt, to lose one you love. And even for him to give, to give into pain. He gave his son into pain. In the end of this passage, you just want to see this one verse here. Verse 12, Therefore I will give him the many as a portion, and he will receive the mighty as spoil, because he willingly submitted to death. He willingly, no one took his life, he gave his life. He was counted among the rebels. Boy, listen to that. The Lord who gave himself for our sin in that moment was counted as a rebel, right? Numbered among the thieves. Yet he bore the sin of many and he interceded for the rebels. Wow. Yeah, that just, that, that passage, that verse t today just really struck me. The Lord who uh, gave himself willingly, he he was kind of, we looked at him, people looked at him at the cross and, and, and still today say, well, he died like a thief, he died like a criminal on a cross, cursed. And yet, in that moment, he was bearing my sin and interceding for me. And boy, how dare someone look down upon him for that, right? How dare someone think that that was anything less than what it was? What an amazing sacrifice. Hey, I hope this has helped you as you prepare to study and teach this lesson, Isaiah 53. What a great passage. We could spend all day. There's so many other things that I wanted to say about the passage, but just kind of hitting a few high points and things that really stood out. Um, so I hope that helps you. Thank you for teaching. Thank you for spending some time preparing. Thank you for letting me help you. I appreciate that. I really do. And I hope that God blesses you as you teach his word this week. God bless you. We'll see you next week.